This is a video of me unboxing my new Ryzen processor and then explaining the entire build that I built around it and the performance of the system after I got it all built. Enjoy the video. Here's the machine itself. I just ran a benchmark. I probably could have spent more money on the case, but I always go with the cheap case. Here are the specs of the supercomputer build. For the GPU, I went with a GeForce RTX 2080 Super, and I found just the lowest price one on Amazon that I could find at the time. And this price is with tax included. That's why it's kind of a weird price. So here is the graphics card I went with. For the CPU, I obviously built this around the Ryzen 9 12 core. With tax, it was around $530. I actually had to wait for this. So this is the first thing I bought. I bought it months before everything else, and I just waited for this to come in. And then once it came in, I built the rest of the build around this. Then the hard drive, I went with Corsair 4 Series MP600. It's a Gen 4 PCIe um, hard drive, so it's a solid state. It's super fast. This hard drive is awesome. I've never had anything like this before. Um, on a lot of the reviews I, I saw, people were concerned about this heat sink shown in this picture, and they were concerned whether it would fit in the motherboard or not. But the motherboard that I have, uh, which is the next thing on the list, is the X570 um, Gaming Pro Carbon Wi-Fi. And this motherboard actually comes with a heat sink built into it already that you can install uh, one of these hard drives and actually remove the heat sink from the hard drive and install it in the motherboard. The motherboard has uh, like a thermal pad that lays right on top the actual hard drive to carry or dissipate heat away from, away from that hard drive. And then in addition to the heat sink, the hard drive also has a built-in fan to cool the whole mechanism. It's really cool. Um, here's the hard drive, I'm just, or the motherboard, I'm just opening it up. And if you can see in the picture where the dragon is, that area, you can take off a couple of those screws and it opens up and you actually install the hard drive underneath that dragon part. And then you reinstall that. And for my RAM, I went with G-Skill Trident Z Neo, 64 gigabytes. I wanted more RAM for this machine because I use this machine for video editing and things like that. So I didn't just want fast, you know, 32 gigs. I wanted decently fast, which, you know, speed wasn't my biggest priority. I wanted um, just the sheer gigabytes more than anything. So that's why I got the 64 gigs. And I had a lot of issues with RAM with this machine. I initially got a different brand. I got Corsair RAM and it was optimized for Intel. I had a lot of booting issues. I had XMP issues. So with this RAM, I, I've been able to run it faster. This one's specifically for the AMD Ryzen. Um, for the case, I got the Fractal Design. It's just a cheap case. I always go with the cheapest cases. Who cares? And this one has high ra ratings. It comes with two fans in it. And it looks pretty clean. I've obviously seen cleaner cases, but 
like that it has the window and everything. Power supply went with the EVGA Supernova 750, and I think this machine only needed 650. I just never wanted that to be a limitation, so I, I, I didn't see anything wrong with just going with a little bit more power than I needed. And I went with a modular power supply. The modular power supply is awesome. If you haven't used it yet, I highly recommend it. It allows you to just disconnect the cords from the power supply, which makes setting up really nice. It makes debugging 10 times easier. You know, if you have to like switch parts out, you don't have to pull everything off the computer just to get to like one specific part that you're after. I highly recommend it. And I went with a CPU fan that is different than the Wraith cooler that comes with the CPU, the Ryzen. And I watched a couple of reviews on this and I just wanted to try it out. Um, just a, a beefier fan. And I've so far had good success with it. This computer is really loud though. This fan, just in general, um, even at low speeds, if it, it just bouncing off zero, that fan is super loud. And I think the Wraith fan is too, because I've talked to a couple of my friends and they have the Wraith and they say the same thing. Um, and lastly, I just got Windows 10 Pro and then I also got uh, Office with this, so I didn't include that. But I totaled everything up and I got to 2660. And then I obviously applied Amazon's 5% uh, cash back. And then I did not include the Windows OS on this because I bought the Windows OS directly from Microsoft. But the total was around $2,500 for this amazing computer. And I don't even know if you can buy something like this from any store. I think I spec something similarly um, at Alienware and it was like 3000 something dollars, but it didn't even have the same specs. It, it wasn't there. They just don't have the capability to get a machine this this um, high performance. And speaking of high performance, I ran just a Passmark um, benchmark program. And so this is just a free software that you can just download and just run and just basically test the limits of your machine. And I love doing this when I build computers because... Um, a, you want to make sure that you spent your money and your, your computer is actually fast. Um, but B, more importantly, actually, is B, that you want to look at all the parts you installed and make sure that there's no problems. For example, I've ran, I've installed things incorrectly. I've, um, you know, not set things up correctly. For example, in BIOS, I haven't, I've had RAM that I did not set the right speeds. Um, I've had... Driver is not installed, so I've ran some of these benchmarks, and my GPU is not performing the way it should have, and it just it's it gives you a heads up that something's wrong with your machine. So you know if you spend nearly three thousand dollars on a machine, you want to make sure that it's it's actually the supercomputer that you think it is. So I ran this test, and um, just to start off, the uh, CPU is the first thing I think. Oh no, okay, the first one is the motherboard. So basically it looks at all computers with the same motherboard and it looks at your performance um, compared to, actually I think this is just compared to other motherboards. And obviously this computer performs very well relative to all the other computers that are tested in the world. So the top 99%. For the CPU, oh actually this is just the pass mark score. So this is my overall pass mark rating. So it's top 99 percentile still. But I think if you go to like, um, yeah, if you go to like this list view, this sorts it based on motherboard. That's why I said that. But if you go to the next one, so go, let's go to CPU. Look at this chart again. So the CPU, the Ryzen 3900, it kills it. Look at this. This is the high end for, for computers that are tested using this Passmark software. And the Ryzen CPU is just off the charts. Obviously, the world maximum is higher. It's 56,000. Who knows what that is? But just the fact that it's this high is extremely impressive. And I knew that it was going to perform highly. I just, I never thought that it would just, you know, crush the performance like this. Um, for the 2D, obviously, I did not build my computer for 2D graphics. But um, as you can see, I am not that good. I'm like just above the mid range. But let's go to the 3D graphics, which I definitely built my computer for with the 2080 Super. And look at it. It's, it's really high up there on the chart. The, the global maximum is higher at 25,000 or something like that. But 
I'm pretty pretty high up the chart with this 2080, which I'm I'm happy with. Because it wasn't the TI or anything. It wasn't a Titan. It was just a 2080 RTX Super. For the memory, and I just explained before that, I went with memory that wasn't that fast. It's 3,600 megahertz, but I have 64 gigs of it, so I can... I have a lot of horsepower when it comes to memory. And as you can see, I'm in the top 98th percentile, which is pretty good. And obviously there's a little bit of room for improvement there, but I only went with, went with 3,600 megahertz. I didn't want to drop $900 on, on better RAM. And I'm, I'm happy with it. For the, the hard disk, this is the, that solid state hard drive that I just talked about. And this is probably the most impressive part of the build if you look at the, you know, compared to the rest of the computers that are tested. Look at this. It's just totally, totally off the chart as well. It's way up there, and the the global maximum is you know some high number, but this basically puts, I mean, it it, it blows away the competition for other mother or other hard drives. My last computer was an AMD Phenom two, and this computer compiles videos in five minutes. That that computer took ten hours to compile. And now what you've all been waiting for. How is it to game on? This is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I think it's the newest Assassin's Creed. I have not played video games in so long. I built this computer and I was all amped on gaming. And then when I was done, I'm like, what games exist anymore? I have no idea. So I ran this one on Max Graphics. I ran like the newest Grand Theft Auto on Max Graphics. And it's, it's hard to even stress the system. I can be like editing videos while running this game, while live streaming whatever and it's you know the system isn't even struggling it's awesome this game's awesome though it's you're a spartan and you're it's set in ancient greece so you, you're a mercenary and you walk around just completing super badass missions it's a pretty fun game but if anyone has any suggestions on what games to play on this machine i would be open to anything what's cool nowadays i think people play like PUBG or something but i don't want to get into something too addictive so this has been a pretty good um, out, outlet for me. If anybody has any questions regarding a build that they're doing, let me know. I had a lot of issues with this build. I had issues with setting XMP profiles. The original RAM I bought was optimized to Intel, and my computer had a lot of booting issues, so I had to go through a lot of BIOS settings to figure out what the problem was, and I ended up getting new RAM. So just things like that. If you need any help at all, let me know. I'd be more than willing to help out. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting a lot more videos of interesting cars and computer stuff in the future. Have a good one.